Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back. We're going to begin Chapter 9, The Phase Plane for One-Dimensional Motion. Okay, more precisely, we're going to be concerned with one-dimensional motion under the action of a conservative force. So the force is minus the gradient of a scalar-valued function, the potential energy. So we've already shown that for this situation, the total energy defined in this way is conserved. That is, if we take a solution, s of t, s dot of t, it is constant along this function. Okay, now so what is the phase plane? The phase plane is concerned with the properties of this energy function. So the plane is the space on which the energy function is defined, s and s dot. So that's the plane where phase came from. That's an interesting historical fact that I won't get it, go into, but it goes back to the work of Boltzmann, Gibbs, and Ehrenfest. Okay, so in order to make s dot look like a more normal variable, we're going to redefine it as s dot equals v. And here's our energy function. h of s v, one half m v squared, velocity, plus v of s. So it's the phase plane is a position velocity plane, or you could call it the position momentum plane if you rewrote kinetic energy as p squared over 2m, where p was mv. Okay, so we're interested in the level sets or level curves of h. Okay, we want to develop a more geometrical picture for this. So if we have a solution, s of t, v of t, we know that it is constant on this function. So if we differentiate it with respect to time, use the chain rule, we see that that's equal to the gradient of h dotted with ds dt dv dt equals zero. So the gradient of h is perpendicular to ds dt dv dt. The tangent vector to a solution s of t v of t in the phase plane. Okay, so s of t, v of t traces out a curve in the phase plane. This is a tangent vector to the curve. So d ds dt dv dt actually is a vector field on the phase plane. At every point, we have a vector. So in order to reflect that notion in Newton's equation, we can write, rewrite any second order differential equation, scalar differential equation, the scalar is s, as a first order vector equation. Vector is s and v, the phase plane. And we do it in this way. It looks a little silly and trivial at first, but conceptually it's going to give us a lot of advantages. So s dot equals v, but s double dot is v dot, which is the this. Okay, so this is Newton's vector field on the phase plane. And the picture that we have for this is the following. So learning this picture is very important. So this is a level curve, a piece of level curve. And we take a particular point on the level curve. The gradient is perpendicular to the level curve. That means it is perpendicular to the tangent vector of the level curve at that point, s dot v dot, which is a solution of Newton's equation written in first order form as a vector field on the phase plane. 
So this is all pretty simple geometry, but it's very important to understand this. So the level curves, the solutions tan are tangent to the level curves. Okay, that means they stay on the level curves. If they weren't tangent, they could move off. All right, now I'm going to teach you a graphical method for given a potential energy from the properties of the potential energy function graph all of the level curves in the phase plane. Now all, I mean there's an uncountable infinity of such curves for dip, for a continuum of energy. Not all energy is allowable, that depends on the potential energy function, but um, for those that are, you'll see that there is a nice way of doing this that brings out the essential properties of the potential energy function that we would like to understand. Okay, that's all for now. At the end of that lecture, I got into it was a little bit vague and woolly, but we're going to go into this in great detail in the next two lectures. So bye for now.